What's going on guys? I'm Joshua, back from the dead and 2% fatter. And today we're going to be doing another, obviously, movie review. But today's going to be a bit different. Today we're going to be reviewing a movie by my good buddy, T-Bone, also known as Emerald Kingdom Films. Uh, he has way more subscribers than I do, so if you are watching this video, you already know who he is. And he released a movie on September 7th, 2016 called New York Vacation Movie. And it's, um, it's definitely a tonal shift compared to some of the previous films he's done, which I've already reviewed one of them, and I feel like we'd be wasting time to go back over it. So if the video's still up, I'll leave a link right here, and you can go click to that and um, hear my thoughts on it. So, uh, New York Vacation Movie is, uh, again, like I said, his latest feature-length film, and it's a movie about going on vacation in New York. It's, um, it stars Jeanette McCurdy, which is an odd choice. I guess she just really needs some work. And she co-stars along with Dan Avedan from Ninja Sex Party. Uh, again, an odd choice for acting. Um, and, you know, not to mention that Dan Gilroy from Nightcrawler wrote and directed this film. Or he co-directed, my apologies. And, uh, which, again, you know, not a lot of this syncs up. From my understanding, T-Bone was actually going to have a completely different cast and crew for this. But due to contract disputes and errors and a lot of... Uh, PR responses and um, focus groups, you know, giving him different, giving his advisors different feedback. He kind of had to go with what he was given and what the in crowd wanted because, you know, got to meet that box office standard. So what we got was the New York Vacation movie. And you may kind of think I'm giving this film a hard time, and I am because I love T-Bone and I want him to be better. But let me go ahead and set something straight. I think New York Vacation movie might be one of his stronger pieces if and only if because of the really subtle hints that it drops along the story. And a lot of people are already confused. What are you talking about? It's New York Vacation Movie, the story about a girl and her creepy uncle who did things to her when she was younger, who meet a monkey and go on these big adventures in Manhattan. It's a very bizarre combination. Why on earth would this be something worth looking at, even in the theater, let alone from a philosophical standpoint? And the answer is a lot more interesting than what may kind of rise to surface upon your first viewing of this movie. See, when I was watching this, I kind of had those same sort of thoughts in my head. I kind of really thought to myself, you know, this is a very bizarre setup for a story. I mean, uh, the story, the background is Jeanette McCurdy plays this little girl. Her name is Sam. Very original. I'm sure that wasn't T-Bone's choice to name her that. But um, she, she uh, when she was a younger kid... Uh, she and her uncle had a very bizarre relationship, her uncle being uh, Dan Avedan from Ninja Sex Party, or Game Grumps, if you are more familiar. So so they're at this family reunion, um, the uncle's there, and she's there, and the uncle uh, was like, hey, I want to show you something, and he takes her into this back room, and he sits her down on a couch, and together they watch The Penguins of Madagascar by DreamWorks, uh, the movie. And uh, it's a really tough scene to watch. It, this film warrants a PG-13 rating. Uh, I, It's hard to say whether it would have been better for R, but I guess we'll kind of uh, leave that as it is. Uh, it's a very tough scene to watch. It's a very tense moment, and if you are a little sensitive in the emotion side, uh, it might be a little tough to get through. But that being said, um, once the scene is over... Uh, it kind of leaves you with this sort of motivation behind the characters, and uh, Jeanette McCurdy is now, uh, I think she's 27, which, you know, I don't, it's hard for me to say if she looks it, uh, and she meets back up with Dan, and they, and he's like, hey, I, I'm sorry for all I did to you when you were a kid, I really want to make this work, because uh, I now that I'm out of jail, I've had some time to think about things, so... Why don't you come with me? I'm going on this trip to New York, and my best friend, who's also a cop, played by Ariana Grande, I'll leave that alone, uh, we're going on this big trip to uh, Manhattan, and I'd love for you to come with us. We're going out to New York. It's going to be a nice, fun time. So they go to New York, and against Jeanette McCurdy's will, you know, I don't know what convinces her. It's a very rushed transition. She just kind of just snaps and is like, okay, I'll go with you. When five minutes before, she's like, oh, why would I ever want to go with you? It's a very, you can tell they just needed that to happen in the script. Um, but they go to New York, and they um, they come across this monkey on their travels, played by Liam Neeson. And T-Bone has some sort of thing with Liam Neeson. I've never really understood it. But, I mean, he's a good actor, so take what you can get. Uh, and he... He informs them that uh, New York is going to be invaded 
by a fleet of dolphins who is led by Tom Hanks. And no, Tom Hanks isn't a dolphin. He's actually just Tom Hanks. And um, he plays a somewhat intimidating villain. And so uh, Ariana Grande gets killed. Best scene in the movie. Um, and uh, so it's up to Jeanette and Dan, uh, girl and uncle, to team up, put aside their differences, and work together to save New York from the dolphins and protect their newfound Liam Neeson monkey friend. The story is something we've all heard before. You know, I mean, it, the, the at first, it, from the trailers, it looked like it wasn't going to bring anything original to the, the, to the table, but I think there's a little hint of subtlety to the script that not a lot of people look at. The entire film is really a euphemism for overcoming one's inner doubts and anxieties, and that's really where the film strides. The, the dolphins are clearly supposed to represent one's inner fear of drowning, because dolphins are in the water. I mean, that makes sense, right? Water, you think of drowning. I mean, who doesn't? Um, and so, um, you know, the oncoming threat of dolphins, and, you know, clearly being forced to watch The Penguins of Madagascar by DreamWorks has messed her up. So she is going to have a lot of anxiety. So when it comes to... I'm sorry if I'm just kind of getting closer and farther away from the mic. It's just a thing I do. Um, so, so clearly... Uh, and Dan is supposed to be sort of the bridge between, um, you know, her fear and her accomplishments. And they just sort of gel. And it's a very, very tender sort of scene when they kind of come to the conclusion that they are more alike than they think, which we're kind of dreading into spoiler territory now, but it does turn out that Dan is actually Jeanette from the future. And he forces her to watch Penguins of Madagascar because he wants her to make sure that no movie like that is ever made. So after they defeat the Dolphins, Jeanette has become a more comfortable person within her own skin she has successfully overcame all of her fears and now she is a big director in dreamworks she has stopped all of the productions of madagascar spinoffs and she has just focused on not making any more madagascar movies because she knew that the third one was perfect and now she's focusing on making really good feature length films and that do I even need to say the symbolism there it's clearly a metaphor for how hollywood directors came up with their projects uh, we've all heard these stories, you know, we all know what Guillermo del Toro went through with his, uh, with his unicycle incident. These things happen a lot, and sometimes, you know, um, the media tries to cover it up, but really, this is a very big symbolism for not just how Hollywood directors, but how any sort of artist comes to grips with their reality. And I have to give T-Bone a lot of credit. I know Rotten Tomatoes gave this movie a 79, but I think they should give it a 79.5, uh, because, um... I think it was a lot better than a lot of people give it credit for. Uh, some of the in-jokes get a little old after a while, and there's definitely a lot of pop culture references that are going to be dated. But I do think it's one of T-Bone's strongest work, and I can't wait to see what his next project is. I don't know if making a sequel to this is a great idea. I think it kind of has a perfect ending, but I could totally see one because, you know, again, spoilers, I would love to see Wally, -E, you know, the robot from the Pixar movies who actually shows up in the end of the movie, uh, in the climax and dies. I'd love to see him come back so he could actually reveal what really did happen to Jeanette's father. But I have a theory on that, and we'll get to that another time. So as far as I'm concerned, um, New York Vacation movie, for me, gets a banana out of 25. It's a really great feature-length film, and I think that if you are bored this summer and you want to sort of, you know, just go out to the theater and watch a really good film. I'd recommend New York Vacation Movie. It's definitely one of the most movies that I've seen all year, and I can't wait to see... Okay, I can't do this anymore. You guys know I'm I'm BSing you right now. New York Vacation Movie is T-Bone's very hard-worked-on compilation video that he did when he went to New York, and it's uh, it's not intended to be any sort of really big feature film. It's just sort of him playing with a camera and special effects to see what he can do. And since this is my birthday present for T-Bone, I want to go ahead and say that it's really good. I thought it was really well done. I didn't get to watch all of it, but I definitely saw enough of it to kind of gather my own conclusion that it is a very good film. It is very well shot. It's The music is great. The special effects are awesome. And for a movie just about a guy going on vacation, and that really is all it is, it's sort of like a documentary uh, it's very heartwarming. It's a very it's just really nice. He did a really good job filming and 
His musical choices were great. There were some funny moments. There were some tender moments. I think it would have been better if uh, he had come to visit me and I had been in it, but that's just my own critical decision. But, yeah, I think that T-Bone did a really good job with this, and it really speaks volumes of his abilities as a director. And T-Bone, if you're watching this dude, happy birthday, man. I'm sorry this took so long. Uh, it's been a crazy past few weeks for me, and I have been responding to your texts. I don't know if you're getting them. But I just, I, I can prove it if I need to. Um, uh, but I love you, dude. You're awesome. And I'm my channel, my life is better for having you in it. I'm God has blessed me with a great friend like you. And uh, without you, I don't know where I'd be. So thanks a lot for all your support over the years. I know this isn't much, but it's it's something. And it's my way to show my appreciation that you are, you know, around. And I hope you had a happy birthday. And here's to many more to you, man. So, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, I guess I'll see you all in the next video. I'm going to go wash my hair because I'm uh, dirtier than a homeless person. See all of you next time. I hope you uh, clicked your... I hope you all liked it, kind of like a, a cheers, because uh, if you didn't, I would kind of look like an idiot.